the head coach of the University of Michigan men's basketball team, Jawan, Big Nuke Howard of the number one seeded Wolverines has taken time to graciously join the program. We appreciate you, coach. Come on, man. I appreciate you, man. It's an honor to be on your guys' show, man. Thank you for having me. Coach, you had an amazing season with the Wolverines. Such a good season that you garnered a number one seed in the tournament, which is a great accomplishment, but also puts a target on your team as you go through the tournament. How do you tell your team to deal with the pressures that come with the number one seed? Well, you have to welcome the challenge, uh, night in and night out. Uh, every team, all 64 is under pressure uh, to perform at this time of the year. But we have to take one game at a time, and we're looking forward to that opponent, whoever we find out who we play. But each and every day, we've been working hard in practice, preparing for uh, to see that opponent on Saturday. Uh, right now, you know, we've been paired with either uh, Texas Southern or Mount St. Mary's. You hate to see any player get injured at this point of the season, especially a, se a senior like Isaiah Livers, who has done so much for the team and for the program. Can you talk about what your team is going to miss without him and who you need to step up in his absence? Well, I need Jalen Rose to step up, man. I know you have <laughs> one year left. You know, you left after your junior year, so we need you, brother. I got a jersey waiting for it with your name on the back. <laughs> Let's get it. <laughs> yeah. You know, but Isaiah Livers, uh, you can't just fill his shoes with one individual. You know, we have to do it as a collective unit. Every guy needs to step up there, play on the offensive end and defensive end. Because what we're missing is a guy who's an amazing talent, a uh, big, huge, of our, big, huge uh, piece of our offense as far as, you know, what he provides on the floor with his leadership, uh, his toughness, uh, his shooting ability, uh, his length, and also his rebound. Uh, but, you know, he, he's, he's got his brothers that's just there for him. That's gonna, you know, he's going to be there supporting him, supporting them. Uh, but, you know, we truly going to miss his absence. Someone who's really come on as the season has progressed is Hunter Dickinson, the big man down low. Can you talk about his development this season? Oh, it's been great. Uh, it's been a joy to coach a guy that loves basketball. Uh, he's a big sponge. We want to get better each and every day. You know, my best day when I come into practice is you know, Hunter just reaching out to me and saying, Coach, can we watch film? You know, that's the joy of coaching. And that's my why of why I'm doing this. And then, you know, some of the work that we get in on off days uh, or before practice, uh, it's beautiful just to see his development, how he's growing game after game. You know, the sky's the limit for him. So, Coach, I'm in Orlando. My daughter's playing volleyball. I'm enjoying pina coladas by the pool. And all of a sudden, I look at the television, and the coach of the University of Maryland makes you unhappy. I was about to go get a flight, but then I realized Chi-Town came out of you and you handled that. Something on the internet came about. Did he say anything about some banners? Or what did he say to get you so upset? Well, first, he did not say anything about any banners. I don't know how that rumor started. But, um, you know, it was just basically I was out of the coaching box. And, you know, as I looked as I was, you know, on the court trying to explain to the referee that the ball is out of bounds uh, and that the angle that I saw is out of bounds. Uh, the ball should be in our possession. Uh, coach turned around and said, hey, I'm out of the box. And I just said, come on, man. We, we on this right now. Let's just, <laughs> we're playing a game. It's a high-level game. He turned around, looked at me, and uh, he basically was like, yo, you don't talk to me. And, and the way how he stormed, you know, towards my direction, it was like, you know, <laughs> all bets off. You know, I, you know, I felt like a man is coming in my space, and it's time for me to defend myself. And, and you know, you yeah, I didn't show the right leadership in front of my team, but at the same time, you know, I'm not going to sit here and let no man just run up on me and not expect for me to, you know, say anything or I'll be ready, you know, wherever it takes. <laughs> All I know is this, Coach. You showed amazing leadership, and I appreciate your humility because what the rest of the world may not know is we're all the same age, but Jawan is like 10 years older than everybody else. And so for him to get upset like this, that means the other person was at fault, not as him. That's what I know. Well, you know, Jay, I, I appreciate you uh, 
always been my biggest supporter. Uh, you know, you shoot it straight. You People say you keep it 100, and that's real talk. But, you know, I would never, ever react in the way that I did unless, you know, I felt like I was being threatened. And truly, I was being threatened. And at that time, you know, I got to defend myself. And I would ask my players anytime they're being threatened, uh, be ready to defend yourself as a young man. Um, and I will support their decision forward. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to moving on from that situation. I think now there's a true understanding that I'm not going to allow anything like that to happen. <laughs> uh, sometimes people get fooled by the smile and uh, also the calm voice. But uh, we all have a past. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, I'm just happy that I didn't have to go to that level because it almost took me to that level. Coach, you're always so mature and humble and you never want to make it about yourself. But I have to ask, when you're by yourself and you're just putting yourself and thinking about where you are, you played on Michigan as a number one seed and now you've coached Michigan to a number one seed. What does it feel like to rep your Maize and Blue like that? Well, you know, my passion for Michigan runs deep. And I'm truly Maize and Blue all the way, just like Jay. Uh, that experience as a player when we played together during that that run uh, during those three years, you know, that was some of the best years of my life. And I had a chance to grow uh, with Jalen, others. And now to be in this position, you know, if someone had said I would be the coach at the University of Michigan, I would say, they're lying, they're crazy, I'm not coaching. Uh, but then to have the opportunity to have a chance to coach at my alma mater and to make a run that we did by getting uncomfortable, embracing whatever's thrown our way not making excuses for it. Uh, each and every game, you know, competing from start to finish. I give all the credit to the players, uh, to the staff, as well as the manager, and also their families, because this has been a collective success of, you know, not just the coach. And yes, you know, I'm very happy with, you know, what has been earned uh, on all levels, but at the same time, we're just so proud of, you know, everyone being able to sacrifice during tough times and buying in to the teaching and being able to apply it, trusting. That's the key word, trust, too. Uh, and it's trust on all levels. I trust them. I earned their trust, and they've earned uh, I, I, I trust them as well because they earned the trust. Trust them. Well said, Coach. And big shout to C. Webb, who definitely should be in the Hall of Fame. I don't know what everybody's waiting for. Shout out to Ray Jackson, Jimmy King, our brothers. Also, Coach, you guys did an amazing tribute this year to John Thompson. And I know how much he meant not only to the coaching fraternity overall, but as an African-American coach, that was a big man. So you're right. breaking a lot of barriers as somebody that's a big man coaching along with Patrick Ewan. Can you talk about that stigma as it relates to what you're now doing in your profession? Yes. Uh... You know, I have to echo the same words that was about John Thompson and the way how he has paved the way for me and other young black coaches, coach on the collegiate level. Um, various, wow, you know, what he's been through from those times was very uncomfortable times. And uh, what he's overcome, the success he's had, uh, it's been amazing and it's been inspiring. Um, now, you know, you see guys like Patrick doing the success he's been having at his alma mater. Uh, you also look at Penny Hardaway. Take a look at Conzo Martin, uh, Jocka Smart, and many others. Uh, it's beautiful to see, you know, how, you know, everyone is, you know, really has done an amazing job with their program. And yeah, there's been a stigma out there that, you know, the best coaches are guys who play guard position. And I don't even look at all that type of stuff. I just know that, uh, you know, where I came from and how I learned the game of many great coaches that I played for, starting on the high school level, collegiate level with Steve Fisher, and then on the NBA level, you know, I've been able to be a sponge and grow. And then with Eric Spolstra and his staff with Fizdale and Chris Quinn and Dan Craig, Keith Smart and many others, uh, I'm here because of those guys that really, you know, helped me grow to be the coach that I am. And I will continue to have that growth mindset wherever I can to help myself cool to be the best version of myself each and every game, each and every year. 
there's been some players that have used the hashtag not NCAA property in the lead up to the tournament. How do you feel about that movement? Well, those guys have a platform that I respect that they're using. They have a voice. They have, to, they have every right to voice their opinions. Uh, and then also they have that name, image, and likeness that's coming soon. So I'm sure that that is weighing on their, their minds. So uh, you have to listen. During these times, it's a very important moment where we have to listen to and hear the voices and see how we can you know, develop some changes that will help maximize our student athletes in different types of uh, fashion. Best of luck in the tournament, Coach. I have to ask you one question before I let you get out of here. I know recruits play dirty pool, and a lot of people are trying to put out there, well, maybe Jawan is focused on the NBA. He ain't going to stay at Michigan long term. <laughs> Can you talk about your coaching future in Ann Arbor? Man, I'm in Ann Arbor to stay, baby. I love Michigan, and I love my job. I'm enjoying the, you know, this experience. I'm, I'm also looking forward to uh, growing, like I said, each and every year and developing these young men to become the best version of themselves as a student athlete. This is a dream job for me. And, uh, I think my passion last year showed how much I appreciate being in this position. Uh, NBA, it's a beautiful game. They have great coaches there, amazing, talented players, beautiful brand. But I, I enjoyed that experience for 25 years, 19 as a player, six as a coach. But with that, uh, I'm going to continue to keep growing with Michigan. Go Blue. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. Sign up for the tournament challenge at ESPN.com slash bracket or download the app today.